everyone and we are live i am with roshan how are you roshan good evening sunny how are you thanks for having me yeah yeah i'm i'm doing well as well <laughs> i'm uh, it's been a long time man it's been a long time <laughs> yeah it's been a long time in fact I, you know okay so the roshan the place i like to kind of start is is where we first met right so where did you and i first uh yeah physically like in person met mm. it was where when do you remember satvik's office in bangalore satvik's office yeah. bangalore you had just you had just come over and then uh, so it, it was after the delhi event so uh, we had this event in delhi where we were promoting bitcoin at a half marathon what year and then you had 2014 yeah 2014 2014 okay 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 oh the wow the same year okay. i got into bitcoin yeah yeah and then we went to dubai for that uh, conference that same year uh the blockchain conference don't that doesn't, doesn't... <laughs> <laughs> no i kid i kid uh, okay so what about what about okay so i mean that that conference was fun man that was a lot of fun we went yeah. to that ferrari thing in, in dubai and... yeah serious oh my god that was some good times <laughs> i remember i was too scared to go on the roller coaster <laughs> you and me so we both you and i, we you and only, I. okay good yeah, good. yeah, 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 yeah. So, i remember so we now the, we both were the only ones who were like left uh, who, who were like they were like no way we're getting into it satvik <laughs> was front row i don't yeah. know i don't understand oh, yeah, that guy yeah. his his risk tolerance is <laughs> way higher than mine that's for sure at least on a physical that's why he's into level. bitcoin man <laughs> that's why he's been right? in bitcoin for a long time <laughs> yeah 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 balls of steel yeah. anyways okay yeah. so 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 roshan let's let's start with uh you know like the first question which is uh which is um as i mentioned you know i i like to think of bitcoin as like a singularity and uh i like to know what people's stories were from diaper if you want um uh you know what what your story is you know kind of coming into bitcoin and what what was like the lens you were looking at in terms of the world and you know what was it about bitcoin that kind of obviously got you interested yeah so uh really great question um so yeah just a little bit like i've um, i lived in muscat most of my life so middle east uh born in bangalore definitely so i've kind of like seen different spectrums of the financial ecosystem and um, studied in muscat uh, then came back to india 2008 was when i came back to india to do my engineering uh, in bangalore itself and um, so uh, i was always into technology right from the beginning so i picked up electronics communication engineering and many of my friends were like why like you're a, you're a computer guy and tech guy and all that stuff and i was like no like what is more can you learn like it's software like you can basically watch youtube videos and learn to build software you don't need to do a four year course for it uh, but electronics yeah it's hardware you know you, you you need some kind of like you know preparation and all that so yeah could have been fun yeah you don't you don't want to get so, zapped or like burn yeah, yourself yeah. on the soldering iron or something yeah like uh, <laughs> yeah yeah like like oh that was a crazy stuff So yeah but uh, but as, as we know like you know it's uh, it's not really what's taught over there <laughs> it's a lot of theory rather than practicalities so uh, mm-hmm, but then mm-hmm. yeah I was always inter- interested in software websites and then um, I tried to I I, I uh, my kind of like entrepreneurship journey started kicking off in 2009 2010 I wasn't really happy with the way uh, syllabus was run and I was like you know uh, we need to think out of the box and I started doing something with social uh, networks uh, i was very much in- inspired by facebook so facebook had just become big in india 2009 10 times so uh, we were all using orkut at the time and uh, so this was picking up a lot and uh, i tried to like you know experiment something with it add the e-commerce capabilities to it so it was always into those kind of website building and um, the social network had come out so definitely like you know uh, the, the social network movie and uh, that was like really really great for everybody you know everybody got pumped up and all the stuff and uh, yeah uh, launched up the website uh, got some users like we, we got like 1500 users in college you know sign up and all that uh, so that was where i was like heading off um, just building networks and it was tough it was a tough time I had no experience with what year we now zero. russian what year 2010 2010 2010 11. and yeah, you're you're in the yeah, midst of your university or you finished now yeah yeah Yeah, I was in second year university, so I had two more years left. So uh, yeah, and then uh, with all that stuff, and then we had this placement. Uh, we had college uh, placement interviews. Companies started coming in, and um, yeah, got placed. But you know, it wasn't like uh, didn't feel like working on it. So I just wanted to focus on this social network, e-commerce kind of a thing that I was coming up with. Um, 
and then uh, spent a lot of time on that. Spent like uh, then I finished college in 2012, and two years I didn't work. Like I was just sitting in my home, just coding, like learning website design, building stuff, uh, doing a lot of freelancing. So uh, just kept coding, and uh, then suddenly, like out of out of nowhere. January 2014. I don't remember the date. I wish I remember the date. I know the month. Okay, okay. So, uh, so many. So you ask many people. You know, what's your journey into this revolution? And they'll say like, you know, my friend referred me, and I came to know from this guy and all that. Yeah, mine yeah, was yeah. a complete. Mine was a completely different story. So. Um, tell me, tell me. So some morning, like I, I don't really read the newspapers a lot. Okay, uh, but one morning I just thought of it you know like just i mean uh, let, let me just take the newspaper and i normally go from sports to business like from the behind so i was like i read my sports then i was reading something about business and, and then i saw this yellow coin thingy on the as an article and i was surprised i was like what the hell is this you know something with bitcoin i, I don't remember the headline but it was those days and i was like okay what is this and it kind of like struck me it was a short article on something related to Bitcoin, and I just Googled it. So I just Googled, I spent like a couple of hours on the internet. And the first thing when I Google, I came across the white paper. And I didn't read the white paper in, in entirety, but what the first thing I went was checked out the code. So I went to GitHub, uh, written in <laughs> C++. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just tried to like, just like sp spend like half an hour, just like going towards the main, main uh, coding uh, pages. And what struck me the most was this one block of code. That block was the halving, where there's a supply that gets reduced every four years. I didn't know anything about economy. I didn't know anything about economics. I was a tech guy. So that kind of like uh, built this, you know, uh, this interest inside me to understand what is this thing even more like, is this money? Like, uh, because I was always taught like governments print money. Nobody else can create their own money. You know, you trust governments, they, they give you, uh, so certain tender to use. And then I was coming across this thing and I was like, okay, what is this? I Googled, there's hardly anything in India. I think I came across ZPay, Unocoin, like just two platforms and something else uh, with respect to what Bitcoin is in India, nothing else. Uh, then what happened, interesting thing. So uh, I kind of like got really interested. I was like, okay, social e-commerce website, you haven't been working for me. Keep it aside. Let me just understand what this thing is right now. And... Um, I went and I bought a graphics card. So a graphics card, it was an AMD graphics card. You know, mining was a huge thing. I know about Buttercoin and all this stuff at the time, you know, uh, came to realize a lot of this. And then I was like, okay, let's uh, buy this mining rig. And for me, mining rig was like an AMD graphics card. So I started mining. You mean Butterfly, right? You mean Butterfly Butterfly, labs. sorry, yeah, yeah, Butterfly, yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Butterfly Labs, yeah. So I, I got this thing and I was like, okay, uh, let's start mining some Bitcoin. And I spent like a week. I, I, I downloaded the client, downloaded the mining software, started powering up. I had no clue what I was doing. And then after a week, I want to check like what's my earnings. And I got like 10 Satoshis in a week. And uh, this was at the, and, and the <laughs> price of Bitcoin was about $220 at the time. So I was $220? Like, yeah, yeah, $220. Okay, so, okay. Was, so 10 Satoshis was like nothing <laughs> at that time mm -hmm. as well. And I was like, okay, this doesn't make sense. And then I, I read a lot about it. I'm like, Bitcoin is like huge, high, highly popular right now. I understood what hash rates are. Then I started mining a lot of other, uh, other currency just to like see what this ecosystem is about and all that. Then I realized computers are actually printing money. Like this is like a new age kind of a financial system where everybody can be a part of it. And that's what kind of like struck me a lot. Like I can be a part of a network where I can authorize certain uh, certain segment, which was never done in financial history. And started reading about the Byzantine general's problem. So that was one thing that really struck me as well. You know, Bitcoin is something that is actually solving the Byzantine general's problem. And uh, then I started like mining and all this stuff. And then for me to understand deeply with respect to the code, I wanted to fork it or, uh, you know, create my own cryptocurrency. Um, so then I, I Googled and I was like, is there any cryptocurrency from India? Nothing. I was like, okay. So there's nothing. So let's try making hey, hey, Rusha, be, Okay. So before we go into the making one, I was going to say, do you, do you, uh, I, I went into it with someone else with Victor the other day from three commas, but like, uh, but do you, do you mind kind of explaining just like quickly, like the, the, the Byzantine generals problem? Cause yeah. I, I also agree. I think it's one of the most fascinating things about Bitcoin and 
Yeah. I, I don't see any news articles about Byzantine general. Yeah, I don't know why. I mean, um, and some of them actually claim that it does not. So uh, anyway, so uh, so the so this was actually uh, if you if you think about it, JFK in one of his speeches in the 60s, he actually mentioned this problem, and he was like, uh, nobody has been able to solve it. You know, uh, uh, so the problem basically means that. Uh, so they said there's a general and he wants to attack from different sides. There is no way that he can be confident that the entire army will be able to attack at once. So there's always a chance where one segment of the army might get scared and back out. And if mm-hmm, one segment mm-hmm. of the army backs out, they will lose the battle. So there was no way for us to know that there's consensus among everybody. And for the first, and even even with software, with servers, there's no way to you know to have like decentralized consensus that everybody will follow the protocol, follow the rules. Uh, so Bitcoin, for the first time, it it created this consensus platform where everything is validated in real time. So let's say any transaction that goes into the blockchain, everything is validated, and every and people across the network have to say okay. And if uh, some of them says like you know this is not possible, then there's like a rewind. So there's like validation across every uh, single uh, node that is part of the network. So this was something kind of like revolutionary, and this is the way how kind of like money is actually like governed so uh, pretty much you, you you cannot double spend there's there literally no hacks involved so uh, this was something kind of like the struck me like i kind of like read what byzantine generals was at that time and i was like okay this is uh, this something that really makes sense and it took me a while to understand that this is a solution for money but in the beginning it was like, it was like this could be a solution for anything in 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 life you know like centralized control is not really good you try decentralizing things try making sure that programs can kind of like make decisions and i actually feel like programs make better decisions than human beings because we can be biased but programs will always do like what is one or what is zero it's binary so uh, yeah so that's basically a short overview of the uh, interesting okay so then you were saying so then you started you're like okay i got to play with this code and the best way to play with it is yeah. maybe start my own okay <laughs> yeah so uh, and it's open source anybody can <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah. So uh, I, I I never really used the Bitcoin. Of course, I I I forked the mm. the major aspects of it, mm. the transaction system. But then I was like, uh, because uh, the SHA two fifty six algorithm that Bitcoin was using yeah. uh, needed ASIC miners, so you couldn't really mine with my. So I had like so for me to test it, I needed a graphics card. So I had my own like twenty five thousand rupees graphics card that I bought, and I was like, you know, okay, let me start. Use putting this into way. Then I studied about Litecoin's algorithm and some some other else, and I kind of like built this other. So uh, I I took Litecoin's algorithm, which is script, and then I took uh, Bitcoin's algorithm, which is SHA 256D, and then I uh, took something called X11. Then I built uh, then I took Grossel and I, and I built this algorithm called Blake 256 as well. So I combined these uh, five algorithms, and I created Saffron Coin. So. Uh, this was the name, and this was uh, April twenty eighth. So it was. What does saffron mean, or just for maybe some people? Who... <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it was just for India. So you know, I was like kind of a nationalist. Uh, so it was like you know saffron, like the first currency from India. You know, cryptocurrency, like. So I, I was like very. Uh, it was very genuine, and I was like, let's call it saffron coin, like you know, the first cryptocurrency from India. So uh, what this does was saffron mean? I mean, it's one of India's major colors. Like, it's uh, it's kind of like the you know the primary color for India. So saffron, right, 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 saffron right. Okay, coin. okay, okay. So, okay. so, so once we started building the community, so there was a good story behind saffron as well. So people started thinking like, you know, um, you can actually back a gram of saffron with saffron coin. So you know, so uh, that kind of a notion came into play, and then we got listed on Bitrex. So uh, Bitrex they exchange, and they kind of like first said, you know. The hottest spice is now in the crypto industry. The most expensive spice, spice. <laughs> and so yes, so these guys like really like you know held and all that. And Saffron got to like a lot of momentum, uh, got to like crazy momentum. And I I faced a lot of issues. So this was just three months of me entering the Bitcoin industry, the crypto scene. Just three months into it, and uh, I was compiling wallets. I had to create Mac wallets, Windows wallets. I was the only one doing all this, and I had no clue what I'm doing. I was just following tutorials, and there's no and there's no place you can ask for help. Because you Google if there's an error, there's nobody there to respond for it. So it's such early days. So you spend like weeks, like kind of like um, building all that, and then so one of the reasons that Saffron took off was uh, it had one of the best desktop wallets, uh, most futuristic uh, at the time. This was before Ethereum and all this stuff. So um, so one interesting thing that would happen was PayPal. Like right now, PayPal accepts 
Bitcoin, right? PayPal has become big crypto friendly right now. So uh, there was a time where um, I was having uh, users of, of the Saffron Coin wallet buy Saffron Coins using PayPal. So uh, PayPal would definitely not allow at that time. So I kind of like figured out a workaround and I was like, let's make gift cards, you know? So I registered as a gift card business with PayPal. So I was like, we are selling these gift cards and uh, like, you know, it's a donation kind of a thing and all that they approved us, they approved us. And then I kind of, then we, I, I, I told the entire community, you know, now you can like redeem your Saffron coin. So how they do it is you buy the gift card using your PayPal account and then you get an email with the voucher code. <laughs> you open your Saffron coin wallet, you enter the voucher code and you get Saffron coin. So uh, it was a little bit of, you know, like a whole lot of it, but, but that was the only What's way. What's the word again? Buy... What, what does Jugad mean? Jugad. <laughs> would we see a picture of you in the in the indian dictionary or something <laughs> yeah like i mean like i, I was like, like somehow because uh because uh big tricks has saffron coin there was a couple of other exchanges but these were not dollar exchanges they were not they weren't fiat to crypto so everybody was asking like can we buy saffron coins using dollars and all that stuff so anyway so but like uh, became like so yeah it, it kind of like shot off a little bit and then people started approaching me for freelance work. So I started making money a little bit like that because Saffron Coin was definitely not making any money. Open source project, no pre mine nothing. So uh, just like push it out. And then uh, there were some, a few of these cryptocurrency, I think Syscoin, I wrote code for them. Uh, Digibyte, so Digibyte you're familiar with. So they kind of like uh, adopted the multi-algorithm concept as well. So, uh, and then I wrote code for like a few other uh, cryptocurrencies. And then what happened was, uh, sorry, att attending these meetups. So uh, there was a lot of meetups in Bangalore, like Unocoin used to host a lot of meetups. So uh, I kind of like uh, re registered on Unocoin once. And then I got a call, like, you know, like just asking about a general, like my experience with Unocoin. I, I kind of like pitched Saffron Coin to them. And they're like, oh, okay, this is interesting. <laughs> you know, India's first currency. They're like, okay, cool. Like, you know, come talk to us and blah, blah, blah. And all that stuff. Okay. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I went to this meetup. Uh, there were like 15, 20 people, I guess, you know. That's when I met Satwik the first time. And, and what year are we in now? 2015? Same, same, 2014, 2014, all this, 2014, 2014, all this like, happened in 2014. This was June 2014. So I, so I think, as, as I mean, that's both interesting and I mean, yeah, I don't even know what to say. But, but, but I think the cool thing about this, Roshan, is that at the end of the day, Bitcoin is open source, unlike like any other financial network or service, like it that is the goosebumps. <laughs> right. Effing yeah. open source. Okay. So there is no one to ask. The code is open source. You can, and anybody can take it and I could create sunny yeah. coin. You just have yeah. better technical abilities than me. So yeah. you're like, I'm going to just create saffron coin. And you yeah. did. And, and and anyway, so okay, so now you're now you come to these. And by the way, I wanted to say I think meetups are part of like because I've been doing this like yeah. Bitcoin stories thing now. Yeah. I'm on like twenty or thirty or something, yeah. and everybody's everybody talks about meetups. So yeah, if yeah. people want to get into Bitcoin, well, man, meetups aren't even a thing now, yeah. are they? They should have virtual meetups or something. <laughs> so before that, right? Like let's mm -hmm. say so uh, like my journey, like I I don't agree with maximalism in a way, but I do believe that you know it's required all kinds of uh, like groups. So um, I kind of like associate myself. So I, I always have this one saying, the longer you are in the crypto space, the more you become a Bitcoin maximalist. You know? <laughs> Sorry. Like, yeah. <laughs> like I created the first cryptocurrency from India, the first altcoin, but I'm a huge Bitcoin advocate right now because you end up seeing, you know, you, you see like, you know, like what actually works and why it works. Uh, and, and many people talk about first move advantage doesn't always work. In cryptocurrency, first move advantage works. You know, there are like millions of like computers across the world running the Bitcoin wallet and you cannot have them shift to something else completely. It's not going to work. You know, so first move advantage in many products, it might not work. Facebook was not the first social network, you know, uh, like uh, Amazon was not the first e-commerce website, but in Bitcoin's case, the first move advantage is going to work. And I keep saying that to a lot of people. And uh, that's why I, I call mean, it a singularity. That's why I call it a singularity. <laughs> People don't get it. Both yeah. before and after Bitcoin's invention, yeah. two different worlds, you know? And so, yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. I agree yeah. with you. Okay. Okay. So continue. Uh, I'm listening. Yeah. You got my the, attention. The meetups. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so I think yeah, it was June, summer, mid-June. Um, so I still have this. So I, uh -huh. I still have that message on my phone. Uh, like I contacted Satsik uh, directly. Like, mm. you know, I couldn't find the meetup place. Like, where is it? And he had messaged me, you come over. 
uh, to this building and all this stuff. So went there and then uh, talked and uh, we, it was a general Bitcoin meetup and it was and I was amazed. So the first time I was able to hear people talk about Bitcoin publicly and also give my own views about what I think about Bitcoin. And that was a good thing. So we, 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 we connected, we went for lunch after that and I spoke a bit of the Safed coin and they were like, okay, this is right. This is something different, uh, interesting and all that. And I was kind of like pitching. So when is Unicorn going to do stuff in coin? <laughs> okay, they were like, oh, okay, we'll, we'll see about it. We'll think about it and all that. Uh, so then uh, they were like, you know, like, uh, like uh, they opened this new office in Bangalore is what Safik told me. And he was like, you know, you should come over visit. And I was like, no, I'm just occupied right now a little bit and all that. And, you know, we just kept in touch. And he's like, you know, uh, what are you doing right now? I was like, nothing much, just, just working freelance and, you know, like building stuff in coin and all this stuff. So he's like, you know, uh, we have, they're setting up a team, you know, uh, uh, like we, uh, we, we we love to have you over. And I was like, okay, cool. Let's uh, think about it. Then we went to a, so there, there was a conference in Shanghai, a Bitcoin conference. So I, I kind of, so, so I kind of like was talking about Safran coin over there. So this was September, 2014. So uh, that's where I met the, uh, the Digibyte guys. I met Trezor over there. So I got to know a lot about Bitcoin and hardware wallets and all that stuff. So uh, that's where I met like Satvik and Abhinand were over there as well. So uh, connected with them and it was fun. Like we were like, we were like you know, it, uh, the conference was amazing. It was really good. My first ever Bitcoin conference. And the first time I traveled out of India, that too to China, where there wasn't Google Maps for stuff. Uh, but Satvik definitely helped me out in a lot of ways over there. So, uh, so, I, so yeah, and, uh, and, and that's where, you know, uh, so uh, I kind of like told him, yeah, sure, we'll, we'll come over, we'll start Unocoin. Like I'll, I'll join Unocoin, let's build this thing together. So I uh, came back to India and uh, then they've, they've got this team and all that stuff. So I think I joined Unocoin November, yeah, November 2014. So 2014 was like a huge year. Like a lot of things happened to me in 2014. <laughs> so, mm. uh, no, and then we joined, like, yeah, it was a month. And then they were like, you know, they want to get to uh, get this conference up and running. That's uh, Airtel Delhi half marathon. Uh, they want to sponsor and all that stuff. So I was like, okay, cool. Let's go over there. Uh, you know, uh, I built... So I was leading the technology team. We had to fire some website up and, you know, take the registrations and all that. So uh, that was interesting. And then after that, yeah, I mean, uh, kind of the health, you know, got like a lot, a lot of signups that day. So one of the things of the HL Delhi half marathon was with the campaign. Um, it was pretty interesting. So uh, we were kind of like giving out these bands for the runners. And, you know, so you, uh, if you register with Unocoin, you kind of like get those bands. And the way the campaign worked was, our stall was the one that was having the most number of people. It was, it was packed. There were lines outside and there was a Reebok stall next to us, which was empty. Okay, and everybody looking at us like, what is going on here? Wait, wait, well, what, you needed a band to what? To get into the, so um, that's what, to get that, into that, the that's marathon? People thought. People thought, <laughs> oh, that's what people people thought. thought they needed a band to run. <laughs> Otherwise they wouldn't be allowed to run. And there was like, and we didn't know that. Like we were like, okay, wow, like people are real. How many people were attending this marathon? We got like 3,500 signups in like two days. <laughs> okay. So and we were like shocked. Like and our servers were going like, we, we were running this ad hoc network, this local server. We hired uh, like, uh, I think like 10 students to start like, you know, like, like having the laptops and start registering people and all that stuff. It was crazy. And everybody's like, oh, I need to like get this band up and running. And we were like, okay, like you want the band so deeply cool. Then we realized later that evening it was like, they thought they needed it. <laughs> so that was like- And people were probably going to other people like, hey, where do you exactly, get that band? You know, I mean, I'm trying to get crazy. it. Like, like, I'm thought, pretty sure like they, they, they have a lot of pictures and all of it, but that was a very good experience. You know, that was fun. Like even, even for me to experience that as well. But yeah, that happened. And then, uh, yeah, and then you came over to Bangalore. And then we connected, you know, uh, so uh, that was fun. Like, you know, uh, December it was, I think. And then the Dubai conference happened, huh, in time. But then, yeah, uh, that's the kind of uh, basic thing. Um, after that, what, that was 2015, right? 2015 and uh, yeah, just talking about Bitcoin. And then we, we used to host a lot of meetups in the Unocon office, right? And uh, whenever, whenever the price went up, we found a lot more people coming in. And then uh, price goes down, there's hardly anybody in. But it was fun, you know, like it was fun. We used to like host it every Sunday, I think, every Sunday of the month. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We used to hold meetups and, uh, and Satwik, man, like I always say like, you know, the way he talks about Bitcoin, there are very few people in the world that can talk about Bitcoin like that. 
you know, with such crisp and such clear communication. He doesn't use complicated words like blockchain and all this stuff. It's very crisp and amazing. And we used to talk so much about all these other technologies. And he had these, he had these amazing ideas as well, like, like what Lightning Network is today, right? Like this off-chain protocol. Like we were talking about that like in 2015. It would be so amazing if we could club transactions together instead of having individual transactions. We could kind of like reduce the block size and all that stuff. So uh, it was fun, like, you know, like uh, talking about all those uh, settings and all that. And then, yeah, 2016, I uh, left Unocoin. So uh, as you know, like, you know, started uh, Throughbit with um, Abhishek and uh, Anand. So I uh, did that and uh, yeah, Throughbit was so, we spent a year developing the product. Um, so we were uh, kind of at the right time because the bull run kind of happened and learned a lot as well. Learned a lot with it. Um, so a lot of people, like we, we found out why people buy, what is making them buy. And many of them didn't really understand what Bitcoin is, it's just going up. And so we came up with a lot of like education mechanisms, tools and all that. And then we met at Web Summit, right? So I think, yeah. So Web Summit is when we kind of like uh, got what? together over there. What what, uh, what year was Web Summit? 20... I think 2016, right? Yeah, 16, 2016. 2016. After, yeah, yeah, and that yeah, was in, I even forget, like in um, in Europe somewhere, right? Portugal, yeah, yeah, Portugal. Where was it? Portugal. Portugal, Portugal, yeah, Portugal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do remember all that. <clears throat> and so, okay, so you went, uh, okay, so you, just to summarize a little bit, right? So you went, uh, you got intrigued by Bitcoin, you started your own coin just because you're so intrigued yeah, by it <laughs> it's got a little bit of traction yeah. you connect with Satvik. you come to a couple meetups you you get you know started with uno coin you you know help lead a lot of our technical yeah. projects and and work uh within uno coin for a couple of years and then uh and then go off and you know start your own business right so which is like a, a yeah. similar type of uh, service like a brokerage yeah. and, and i think that's kind of awesome too because i, I like I, I shared my story somewhere i forget but um but like you know initially i i was watching like mahin uh, with even before zeb pay there was something called buy yeah. sell bitcoin that i used to ask him about and <laughs> And I used to want to work with him and stuff. And he was kind of like, no, go start your own business. And so, you know, everyone kind of inspires different people. Mm -hmm. And so it's nice that you went off and started your own business because at the end of the day, that's what you want, right? You want like an ecosystem. In fact, guess what? Uh, yesterday I interviewed, or two days ago, I interviewed Nischel mm -hmm. from uh, Wazirex. Okay. So, so I'm really, really interested in kind of getting, you know, different perspectives, like the Bitcoin story. And, uh, and yeah, and so through bit, so you guys saw, uh, you know, quite a bit of traction mm -hmm. there and, and into the 2016 run, we all meet up at Web Summit, then what happens? And then I guess, uh, yeah, yeah, then we, then we launch and then I was, I was very much intrigued with Ethereum. I think we both had this conversation as well, like Ethereum and RSK, Rootstock. Were you at the one where I had Vitalik come in into one of our Bitcoin meetups? Like, I, I think at least twice Vitalik yeah, yeah, yeah. was kind enough so to- I'll tell, uh, yeah, okay, that, so, okay, that's a lot of stories, which I missed. Okay. Woo -woo. So in- in the Unocon office itself, like you were there, we had this conference room behind, right? Uh, yeah, a couple of a couple of months before I before I left Unocoin. So that time mm -hmm. we were having this, and uh, this is a very good important uh, story for a lot of viewers who won't even know. So UPI, UPI is a product mm. of the NPCI hackathon, which is huge today. You know, UPI was born out of that. So uh, Satvik came up to me like I think January or February. He's like, you know, let's participate in the hackathon. Let's party and let's build this financial product for India, making use of blockchain and all that. And I was like, okay, cool, let's let's do this. So I came up with this idea of what, what is this? What is I missed this one? Wait, sorry, say it again. What what what? NCP UP UPI. Sorry, UPI, like you're, you're like uh, I know what UPI is. Right? Yeah, so 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 UPI was born on UPI of, is like the network that the government uses, right? There's like yeah, a yeah. like a it's a way to move money around. Yeah, yeah, like pretty much you're instantly, saying it was right? born out of the what? hackathon. Out of a hackathon. Yeah, uh, which of, hackathon? Uh, NPCI. So it's the uh, so it's like the uh, a government payment. The national payment. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so they held a hackathon in Bangalore in 20. I don't know where they held it, but uh, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. it was in 2016. Yeah, it was in 2016, 2016 September okay. or somewhere where the uh, it was. And held. you guys decided to participate, and you're like, let's build something yeah. like UPI. No, on block on, so we, so on we what? Know, we didn't know what UPI is because this was before the hackathon. Oh right, 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 right. Obviously, yeah, okay. So yeah, so Satvik yeah. just came in, you know, like like we've been asked to build something. Like let's build something. Like we like we are in this crypto space. You know, uh, let's and, and be in the financial space as well. So let's who asked I, who asked him to Satwik. build something? I don't know. I don't remember that. Okay, but he okay, was okay, like, whatever, you know, whatever. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we were like, you know, let, uh, okay, okay, let, okay. Let, let Unocoin participate in this uh, hackathon. Let us build something cool for the for the Indian financial system. 
so uh, then we came up with this uh, stable coin concept you know so we were like let's build a, a a blockchain that kind of like connects to different banks across the nation all the major banks and let all these settlements happen on this ledger and everything is pegged to rupee so basically you are circulating rupee over the ledger so this was 2016 stable coins was a very new concept like not many people would have even heard of it like tether was like start, starting to pick up momentum but this was like early stage we didn't even know what we're talking about so we were like it'll be amazing if we could move the rupee as a cryptocurrency like you know like one is to one and uh, i still have the flowchart with there in my phone i was just looking at it a few days back i'm like wow we actually do the flowchart on the whiteboard over there and we were discussing know. it okay okay continue and then, this and, is and crazy then, and, and then and then i asked you and i'm like uh, you know what so i was like so so then I, i had to figure out the technology yeah. so i was like okay let's let's do something with smart contract let's let's build on ethereum and you were like hey i know vitalik you know uh, like toronto guy you know spoken to him like i, I can get you across to him i was like oh wow cool and that's when you 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 organized the skype call with vitalik in our in our in, in our office in the conference room so uh, and and then i and then we had like a 30 minute call with vitalik and then i kind of like told him about this concept i'm like you know this is something different that we want to make for india we want to settle rupee on a blockchain using ethereum smart contract and he was so nice like you know uh, this was before he was really famous but <laughs> he was really he, was, he spoke really nice and he was like yeah this is definitely possible you know ethereum can support all this you know it can scale and all this stuff and all that and uh, and that was kind of like the first initial phase of like you know the stable coin concept that we had and all that but then i think but then we kind of like pulled out. i don't know why i have to ask after some day like why did we pull out of that we never submitted the proposal <laughs> so uh, we kind of like pulled out of it um, but yeah but that was wait, what, what, wait, what hold on wait what so what you you designed this you did this but you yeah but we then we never submitted it huh we didn't submit it So we then, how do you it. know that there was that idea that became UPI? Or you're saying it's not? No, no, it like, wasn't that idea. We don't. Oh, was, oh you're idea. just saying I, you're working I, on I something. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I see. No, I see. something like so UPI. It's a, it's a it's a similar thing. It's just that UPI use UPI connects to central banks. Mm. So what we wanted was let a block like instead of a server connecting to different banks, let a blockchain connect to different banks. Same concept. Mm. It's just that UPI is centralized. We were coming because because that was the theme of the hackathon. Like, how can you make sure that? different banks talk to each other mm. so that's why we thought like you know let, let's build this blockchain where every bank is connected to it and all the settlements can happen on it which is what upi is but without the blockchain concept so then we kind of like realized oh wow okay <laughs> so um so, okay 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 so it was it it was it your guys <laughs> idea that it may, could it have been could it have, could the could the government i mean could the i don't think they would have, i don't think they would have accepted oh, but you didn't it. even submit know. it so okay so we didn't even submit it we didn't even build the like Build the technology. I don't know. Like they kind of like it just kind of like it just went off. I'm, yeah, I don't know, yeah, like, yeah. Other things came up, but but the, but the key yeah. point there is is like you can do a lot of things with you know with Bitcoin, obviously, right? And, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Ethereum and things that you couldn't do yeah. before. Okay, so what what happens next? So you guys go through through bit and then, hmm. So yeah, we go through through bit and uh, yeah, we go well. Like you know, uh, uh, we we were actually the first ones to launch Ethereum to INR. So in India. Uh, we, In India, in India, yeah, yeah. So uh, we, yeah, we had Ethereum to Anna. So it was all OTC, like brokerage, kind of a platform. Uh, and it was real uh, topsy turvy, you know, because it wasn't order books. So uh, many of us asked us, why not have like order books? So we like we want to keep it simple. You just click a button, buy Bitcoin, and that's it. It's in your account. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so that was like so November, December. We had like a lot of uh, huge amounts of traffic, and and that's when I kind of like kind of like estimated something was going to go wrong. you know uh, something is really going to go wrong with the price is there are too many people buying uh, you know it's uh, it's it, it, it's it's a kind of a bad signal uh, but then we we want to educate a lot of people like you know when they want to buy like people used to call our call us up used to enter our office and like you know want to buy and this and that so uh, we kind of like understood like why they want to buy and they want to buy it for the old currencies so uh, and that's where you know the ripple kind of a thing comes into play like ripple shot up a lot because of india so uh, this is a statistic that not, not many people will have but uh, ripple went up to 2.5 dollars because of the indian market everybody in india wanted ripple everybody like i mean 90% of our customers wanted ripple and uh, we didn't have ripple so they were buying bitcoin from us or ethereum because it's faster transfer and we used to take it to poloniex and all these other exchanges and they used to buy ripple from it and the reason we used to ask like you know why 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 do you want to buy ripple and they're like oh bitcoin is 10000 dollars it's too expensive ripple can go to 10000 dollars and i was like wow and then you know then i realized that you know uh, it's not just about building a business 
it's very important because we are we are the early stage guys people look up to us and it's our job to educate people and then we were like they'll get wrecked if they ever think ripple is going to go to 10000 dollars and then we started talking to them we started explaining to them you know you want to buy buy but buy for the right reasons there's not enough money in the world to pump ripple to 10000 dollars then they asked like why and then we we spoke about the supply like ripple has billions of supply it cannot go to 10000 dollars there's not enough money and compared to bitcoin where it's a limited supply and all that so so that's what kind of education do oh we didn't even know about this we thought you know it's like it's like uh, 100 rupees like you know it's it can it can go to up to uh, up to a lakh or something like that's amazing so that's where you know we started coming and we started talking to a lot of people and then yeah and then the kind of like downhill slope happened you know the rvi thing all the stuff so uh, that was really oh, but hey roshan roshan but there's yeah. a, i think there's like an important point uh, embedded in there because You're right. I I've talked about this too or, uh, earlier is is that there were a lot of companies in India even that mm-hmm. their strategy was to list the cheapest coin. Yeah. <laughs> and so 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 but this brings up a key point, right? And, yeah. and I, it's it's really hard for me to articulate, but um I, I guess at the end of the day, what's important to remember as entrepreneurs is that it's not just about making money. It's mm-hmm. not just about making money at any cost. Um because if let's say there's two outcomes one outcome is 10 years from now i can end up with 10 million dollars but i have to screw 100,000 people in the process and then mm-hmm. there's outcome number 2 where i only end up with a million dollars but only one or two people get negatively impacted because of some like you know things maybe i yeah. overlooked or whatever but it's you know multiple orders of magnitude less let's say i personally yeah. would take the second outcome like the 1 million dollar outcome because it yeah. lends itself towards sleeping at night and being able to like have a peace of mind yeah. that i didn't create a vehicle that you know what i mean like that 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 made people poor and even though if you think about it as an exchange you make money on the way up on the way down on everything i i yeah. I, i do think that i think you know and we come from the place of like oh well we're free market you know blah 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 but you know i talked to sethik yeah. a lot about like just removing everything off of our platform except for bitcoin and i i know that would be like <laughs> shooting ourselves in the foot because yeah. people want choice want, and like you said choice, yeah. but i don't know but there's a, there's a balance to be struck right doing the right thing and uh-huh. and and yeah, you know, I would serving say like, you know, market guys... need just for whatever yeah. purpose <laughs> see i would say like you know like uh, like when i used to talk about like i was thinking like you know sapik you like you know you guys are such heavy on bitcoin and you have this bunch of other currencies like all these other old coins and i was like you know the market needs it so i so i, I completely agree with the the stance that you guys took because it was necessary if if people don't go to you they'll go somewhere else they'll still burn their hands right there was a necessity but also like the education curve is also what's important to even tell them so that that's something that we as throughbit didn't do well uh because we didn't go that route so and then i realized you can't be that person you know because people will leave you people if you, if you if you don't give what the market wants because of your you know ideology that you know uh, save them and just stick to bitcoin ethereum we were just bitcoin ethereum we had offers people were paying us bitcoin you know just to list their currencies new currencies and all that and they're like no you know bitcoin like we're not bitcoin maximus but we love ethereum as well so bitcoin ethereum is what we are like you know kind of like trying to push out and then it didn't work you know uh, down the line people started started going somewhere else the traffic started going all these new exchanges started coming up coinex like coinex was one of the first that came up with so many different currencies and they kind of started becoming popular so the, so people started shifting over there because they could trade all these other new tokens that were pumping like 100x in one day and all this stuff so uh, we kind of like lost a business ploy over there but then at the end of the day it was like you know okay it's fine you know but the stand that you guys took that was definitely uh, No, it's definitely right. And being in the space because it's all it's all always about surviving. You know, uh, we are we we are in an industry that we are self-regulating, so it's always about us kind of like taking the move and surviving for ever, like as long as possible. In this mm-hmm, uh, space. Mm-hmm. cool, yeah. Oh, there's a lot in there. I'm glad you brought all that <laughs> up. What what what's next, yeah. man? So what happens after this? Uh, mm-hmm. so, yeah, yeah. So then, yeah, the, uh, yeah. Then we we start we we ran the like we like. we were running uh, running the business after that you know uh, not getting much revenue like you know people started like kind of like withdrawing and then the rbi thing that happened right um, so we had like three months or something before our accounts were going to get closed so uh, we kind of like grappling up a lot of things and uh, we started like focusing on building this order book exchange we started going against our vision 
and we started building this because there was no INR involved, so it was okay for us to run something that's crypto crypto related, and all this. Uh, but then, yeah, but then I, um, I I I started thinking deeply about the ecosystem, and that's kind of like uh, took to what it will, uh, kind of like result in what I'm doing right now. So I left Rubit in 20. Yeah, it was last year itself. Yeah, yeah. So last year March, somewhere uh, I kind of like it's after leaving Rubit, I I started attending. A lot of conferences and it kept me thinking i kept thinking so okay exchanges have done a fabulous job you know we've gotten so many people into uh, bitcoin into cryptocurrency but there's always something lacking and uh, i always kept like you know thinking like who goes to exchanges people that want to buy uh, people that get referred you know or if there's a bull run people search for buy bitcoin and they just see an exchange and they and they go to it so it's more of so an event is what influences buyers into Bitcoin. So is there a way where we can not depend on an event? And if you make Bitcoin ubiquitous, uh, it's everywhere. And uh, I was thinking of the ideas and then I was like, where is the mainstream population? Like, let's let's tap into the mainstream segment. And that's where I came across, uh, I, I thought of this thing called rewards, like people love rewards, uh, giving free Bitcoin across. And I started talking to a few people. I'm like, would you like to get Bitcoin in return? And they're like, what is that? And then I started asking, like, see, you get cashbacks when you do shopping. When you when you start purchasing stuff, you get like 50 rupees, 100 rupees, whatever. The cashbacks you get. And what do you do with it? Some of them just keep it in their wallet. Some of them go out, they spend it instantly. It's nothing. Then I asked them, like, okay, instead of that 50 rupees, how about if you get a Tesla stock or an Apple stock? And then they started listening to me, like, wow, like, oh, being in India, like I could buy that. I'm like, I mean, no, I mean, but, but what if you, you could? Look, like, definitely. Why? Because it's an investment, it's an asset. It's an asset that can go up compared to a rupee that will always remain the same. And it doesn't really matter how much of cashbacks you get. It's a small amount. And then they're like, definitely. Then I told them, how about an asset that can, that has increased 24 million percentage in the past 11 years and is something completely revolutionary. And then like, what is that? Then I said, like, that's Bitcoin. Like, what if you get Bitcoin instead of cash? And that's what in intrigued a lot of people. And then I was like surprised, okay, wow. Because it's an asset, it's an investment. So then I realized that this is the space that we can kind of like enter, uh, leaving the exchange model aside. So then uh, this year itself, uh, I started this uh, company called GoSats. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a place where uh, users can shop at any of their brands, the top brands in India, and they get Bitcoin in return. So uh, they make any, they just do their average shopping. They get, they use their coupon code discounts anywhere, the same way they do, but they also get Bitcoin into their wallet. So this is a thing that I feel like, you know, this is the way where we can tap into the other segment. If they don't like Bitcoin, no problem. So the vision that I have is that even if you don't like Bitcoin, I do not want to leave you behind. It's okay, you might not realize it right now, but five years, 10 years on the line, you will realize how big, how huge Bitcoin is going to become. And then you shouldn't feel like I don't, I don't hold any. So this is a way where, you know, you do, you do your normal shopping, just do it through us and get Bitcoin in, in return. And if it goes up, you gain. If it goes down, you don't lose anything because you're getting it for free. And you'll always have Bitcoin into your wallet and no private keys, nothing. It's simple. It's like your, so, that, so I like to call it like the Paytm wallet for Bitcoin, like simple to use and just get average mainstream people, shoppers do that, uh, use it and all that. So yeah, so that is the kind of thing that struck me and with this way to lightning and all that, trying to integrate. Wait, so, 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 Roshan, and, so are you saying yeah. that through your app, I can buy things? Yeah, yeah. I can so, buy uh, things on what, on Flipkart? Flip, Flipkart, Domino's, Pizza Hut, uh, Swiggy. And you what, you plug like, into their API or something? No, so you, so on the app, uh, you click on Flipkart, for example, the Flipkart browser opens. Uh -huh. So you shop on Flipkart. So you so you, you don't shop through us. You, you shop oh. your, your usual on, on Flipkart. But once you're done with your shopping, you come back to us and then we show you your order. Uh, so you'll be like this much of sats you want. So it depends. So so every brand has their own commission. Like some of them give us, like we have brands that give us 20%, 25%. Uh, we have brands that give us 5%. So we, so we, so we, so they, they pay us as a company. So what we do is we are like, you know, let's, split that with the user. Let's split that and, and give Bitcoin, free Bitcoin to the user with whatever money that we are earning. So we are sharing our profits with the customers. 
in the form of Bitcoin and of Bitcoin. Uh, whatever reward, other kind of rewards as well, or just Bitcoin? no, 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 just Bitcoin. You get you get just Bitcoin, and yeah. And and how's it going? Yeah. So okay. So uh, we, when did you launch? Yeah. So uh, we launched uh, early access in August. So we launched a website in August uh, this year, and um, yeah, we've got we have go, uh, got a lot of feedback. So uh, the app. So we took like two months to develop the app, the application. And uh, we got like uh, about three thousand signups uh, and interest earlier on, and then uh, we released the app to like selected uh, users uh, last a couple of weeks ago. So uh, just having them test out it, test it out. It's it's not public on the app store yet, but uh, we are taking a lot of feedback and we're trying to like you know like improve it. And and some of them are like amazing. Like they like Android and and iOS. Yeah, yeah, both, both, both. Nice, both. buddy. That, so, that that's a great story. I love it. I love it. Hey, have you heard yeah. of Lolly? Yeah, yeah. Is it like yeah. a similar thing, but for India, or I guess? Yeah, I would say it's something similar, but yeah, but they but they operate with the Chrome extension. I think it's it's not a it's not a mobile application. It's not a mobile app. Okay, okay. And yeah, can I do yeah. can I do Amazon? Yeah. So Amazon, we don't have yet, but we are in talks with it. So, hmm, um, interesting. so yeah, if, I mean, if you think about it, it's Bitcoin, right? So some of them, because we have, because when you go to the website, it's like Bitcoin. So some brands kind of like are skeptical with respect to it. So we kind of like- So wait, so Flipkart we wasn't? So uh, we have these networks that kind of like connect us to these brands and uh -huh. we tell them, see, you don't deal with Bitcoin. Your customer doesn't deal with Bitcoin. You deal with INR. We take care of Bitcoin. And, and for us, Bitcoin is a loyalty rewards program, which is true. We are tapping into the loyalty space, like like how you give points on a credit card shopping, or you know you give airline miles. Mm. We are giving this blockchain token called Bitcoin. It's the same thing. So you 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 don't have to deal in, uh, deal with it at all. You are you are completely fine. The customer is completely fine. It's our personal loyalty reward program that we are choosing to give Bitcoin, and we get that Bitcoin from whatever cases. Like it's, it doesn't matter, but we give that to the user. So uh, that is what kind of like convinces a lot of uh, people, uh, a lot of brands. Wow, that that's awesome, man! I love it. I love it. Okay, what else? Uh, anything else on that? On that? I mean, that's a fascinating story. I, I wish you the best of luck. Let me know if you need help. Hopefully, this this uh, this interview alone will double your user sign up. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm, I, we'll be lucky if our if our parents watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. So what's happening with you? Like, you're, you're sorry, you're, so it's a new podcast that you've begun. Have you been running it for a while? Uh, uh, I'm what's on story episode number, the story behind Bitcoin stories. Yeah. I don't know, <laughs> man. Well, you, know, you know, for the longest time, it, it, does my voice echo? I think I still have to figure out my mic. Is my, is my voice echoing or can you hear me okay? It's, it's fine for me. Okay, okay. It's totally fine for me. No, what I was going to say is that um, for the longest time, Roshan, um, I couldn't help but feel, and you might, you know, agree here, is that we live in a movie. We live in a. I always, I always think like movie. that, you know, like we, okay, and we are like characters who are like being pulled by strings. They all have a certain role to play. Right, it's right. Weird. Satoshi is the the puppeteer in the back. We used to talk a lot about this back at Unicoin times, right? We used to talk a lot about this, like how how the world works, about this code that kind of like functions everything. We used to have some deep conversations. Yeah, man. So, so yeah. So, I, so whenever people used to ask me, I used to always jokingly say, "Oh, someday we're gonna make this into a Bollywood movie. Someday we're gonna make it into a Bollywood movie. Someday we're gonna make it into a Bollywood movie." And then I thought to myself one day, I'm like, "There is no way even a four-hour-long Bollywood movie could do this justice. Like, there's no way. How? Like, I, so I was just like, you know what? YouTube exists. Like." All I had yeah. to do was just figure out how to connect a couple of things in my in my place here. And mm -hmm. now with the pandemic, I'm like, and you know, you know, I used to be like, I mean, the reason Unocoin was doing meetups, I just did an interview with Satsvik. So he told the whole story of how he came to one of my first meetups. Mm -hmm. I was running thousand person Bitcoin meetups in Toronto. I love, uh, you know, and some of those meetups, I, I was not making money. I was losing tons of money, but I just <laughs> love getting people who are passionate about Bitcoin together. And now mm -hmm. with the pandemic and with all this, like uh, events aren't going to happen. And so I was just like, how do I do something similar? And I'm like, well, you know, after deep thinking, I thought, what do I enjoy most about my meetups when I'm sitting on, you know, stage or whatever with someone really smart and I'm just talking to them and I'm asking them questions. 
Um, and so I thought, yeah, so this, this maybe I'll, I'll just try that and then zoom and everything was just like oh my god this is too easy it's like it's like pretty much what i do anyways um but i could just like turn on the record button on zoom and now i have you know stuff and stories that i can share with people and, and inspire you know a, a thousand more roshans right like to create more businesses in bitcoin and, and that's yeah. kind of the goal um but yeah but you know and, and you know and, and i also felt like i had a lot of stories to share but i was like what's the best way to get what you want it's to give it you know what i mean so so i figured the best way to get my stories out would be to put a focus on other people's stories yeah that's true that's <laughs> and that's amazing man that's, it's a bit I've roundabout been... <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, but i've seen some old videos of like you start off with just explaining what bitcoin is and you have a lot of videos of that earlier on, like three, four years ago. Yeah, I was right? playing around with that format too. And I'll probably go back to some of that, but that stuff takes so much time. It's like yeah. editing. I love it, mm -hmm. but I, I get carpal tunnel, man. My, my fingers just start hurting. And my point is like, anyway, so so this this interview format, and I thought to myself too, like how many people, um, like, you know, there are other podcasters out there, right? I won't name them, but there's there's obviously like three big ones out there. And so, I mean, I don't think you have to always do something different, but I think if you're going to embark upon something, it's good to know how you're doing something a little bit different. <laughs> and so my, my kind of answer to like the question around, well, why are you doing this when, you know, there's so much other noise out there and they're kind of doing the same thing is that I would argue that most of the other podcasters are outsiders looking in to the industry so they almost intentionally kind of play like they don't know anything and they're trying to ask very simple questions i haven't seen many podcasts out there or like whatever we're doing here video casts i haven't seen many where the, it's like insiders looking out like people deep in the space that have been in you know us canada india all over the world and you know and and has all these perspectives and and on top of that i also know roshan as you know everyone like almost everyone um that i think matters because i've you know been in this space yeah. for eight years so i figured that you know what i'm doing and also i like to know that whatever i'm doing it's not like easily replicable and so i i think i think people would be hard pressed to try and try and punch out an hour, two hours worth of content every day. I might start pumping that up to four hours a day. I mean, ima <laughs> imagine the amount you have to keep talking. You know, like like you said, you you, you just got done with an interview with Satwik. So you're just on the roll. It's listening, easy. listening though, not talking. I'm mostly <laughs> I'm just asking. And here's the beauty: I'm asking the same yeah. questions. I have my I, I have like, a format. <laughs> <laughs> and li listening is harder than talking. When you're talking, you're in the flow. But listening, oh my God, I have to pay attention to every little detail. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I agree, I agree, I agree, I agree. But this was it's fun. not easy. This was really but fun. I'm, I'm doing this. Uh, I'm yeah. doing this. Like I said, I'm doing this with everyone. Like you know, with yeah. I, I, like I said, I interviewed Nischal from What's yeah. Your Ex recently. Yeah. Look, my, my whole thinking is, if you're in Bitcoin, you're my friend. Like, I don't care yeah. if you worked for us and or I work for you or, yeah. you know, you're a competitor or I don't care. I'm like, if you want to talk, you know let's what? talk. Yeah, like, th that's one thing, like, see, like, even Satik and we, like, we, we're really close. Like, you know, we talk a lot and, and I, I tell to everybody, like, in the Indian ecosystem, we are together. We are one family. You know, let's start supporting each other uh, and start building towards a common kind of a goal, which is kind of, like, super, super important. And... If you look at it like you know, there, there, there are very few OGs that are still that are still in the space, right? Uh, we have it, and I believe that every bull run brings in new people. So we have a lot of exchanges that came in because of the 2017 run. A lot of new influences came in because of that. Then if this is another bull run, you'll be finding a lot more and a lot smarter people. Like there are some amazing smart guys in the Indian crypto space right now. And we are going to get some even smarter ones and even smarter. And that's how and we're going to like build like really, really Crazy stuff, man. T uh, tell me about your thing with the Uno. Like, congrats on the Uno coin uh, deal. Like, so great stuff is happening with that. So, like, <laughs> what you mean, Tim Draper? Yeah, like the raise and all that. Like, really nice. Dude, stuff. Like, we've you know, been pitching yeah. Tim for like five years. I mean, I can serious? say it now. I mean, yeah. I probably we probably uh, us co-founders have individually, collectively, yeah. together, we've pitched Tim for five years. Um, wow. you know, and, 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 you know, I, I brought this up in my conversation with Sattvik earlier too, which is that it's not, um, 
people think that uh, that that like the way to start a business is to go and raise money. Mm-hmm. Um, if you need money, uh, that's not the time to raise an investment. The time to raise an investment is when you don't need money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's when you're like <laughs> cash flow positive. It's when there aren't hopefully any regulatory obstacles, like in the immediate future, at least. Um, but long story short, Tim, Tim is a legend, right? Hope, I, I think I'm going to get yeah. an interview with Adam Draper soon. Uh, hopefully okay. with Tim, you know, eventually I haven't asked him yet, but I'm working my way up to, you know, the someday, 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 Barry, so what, Tim. So, so what advice would you give to like, you know, like early stage guys, you know, like, as you said, like, you know, you're, you, if you're in the middle, middle of raising money, it's not really a good time, you know? Uh, so what would yeah, you Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, that's advice? my main thing is, is it's kind of like dating. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. if you're, you know what I mean? If you're obviously super needy and you're, companies yeah. like dying yeah. like think about yeah. it if you think about it like the the people who are investing right they're like obviously very very wealthy like incredibly wealthy yeah. and they're trying to do what everybody else is trying to do which is increase their wealth yeah. and so so if if they come across somebody that is in distress they're not going to be like oh take my money instead yeah. they want to look at like almost like very um counterintuitive uh, opportunities and be like, hey, you know, is there is there maybe uh, like an asymmetric bet here that I can place, where I know that oh my god, these guys mm-hmm. might turn into a multi billion dollar company yeah. if I own X percent, I can increase yeah. my wealth by Y percent. Like, they want to make tangible yeah. moves on their balance sheet, and and they have a longer yeah. time frame. It might be five or ten years, yeah. but the That's- end outcome and the goal, you know, must be something magnificent. Um, yeah, so, so I, my, my, my main suggestion would be, okay, so in terms of like my advice to entrepreneurs about, so to like, if you're going to raise money, there's, there's a bit of a, there's a bit of a system I would say, but, but in terms of like, when you're in front of, let's say the investor, um, there's really only three things that every investor cares about that I found from my experience. One is market size. So whatever you're doing, right. Um, if you win, let's say 10 years, 15 years down the road, what is the potential market size, right? In my eyes, Bitcoin is disrupting money. <laughs> so it's like, you can't get a bigger market size. Um, uh, but, but you know, whatever project you're doing, you got to find out kind of the market size. I think that is, and I would say that is 70%, 70% of the sale to most investors because that's what matters. And I don't even start with, oh, I'm Sunny Ray and I grew up in Alberta, blah, 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 because they don't care. Like your first slide, I think should be like market size. <laughs> like, hey, if we win together, like this is what's at stake. And then if you can get their attention uh, and hold it for more than, you know, a few minutes, then the second question they ask is, okay, I agree with you. There's this massive market size. The second thing you need to show them is like some widget some tool, some website, something that you built that is now growing, right? In terms of traction and that, that, that you have, and that growth rate. And if I were to put a specific percentage, it should be like five to 7%, maybe per week uh, in the early days of a business, um, that growth rate is there and that you can demonstrate that you have the ability to build you know what I mean? Like, like products yeah. that will, yeah. or solutions rather, that will serve that need. And, and, and that, that's the second piece of the puzzle. And then the third and final piece is if you can convince them that there's a massive market size, that there's, um, you know, uh, like, a, like, a, like I said, a widget, a, some, some sort of gadget, something that you can actually build uh, that gets traction. And then the third and final step is, is okay, you've convinced me that you can build something, but why you? Like why your team specifically? Yeah. Are you guys best positioned to? Why can't, you know, XYZ company tomorrow come up and rebuild yeah. the exact same thing and now you're out of a business? Like, you know, what's your, yeah, what's your kind of moat? I'd say those are my three main things. There's a lot to it, obviously, but, but yeah. yeah. So mm-hmm. one of the, so, uh, yeah, so, so like, w- like one thing I would say, like nobody invests in ideas and pitch decks, even though they say they do, you know, a lot of investors as well, like, you know, like, okay, fine, idea is good. It may work. Idea is just an idea until it can be executed. So one advice I give a lot of people as well, you know, like what even I've kind of like faced and facing as well, you know, get something out. You need some traction, have like 10 customers. It's okay. You know, but have those 10 
daily regular customers. That's what's extremely bad because then you can grow the 10 to 1,000 uh, and they just scale from there. And 100%. like when, when we, I mean, even we are uh, like in a, in, a, in a raising phase as well right now. And we, and in the beginning, you know, everybody loved the idea and all, you know, but, uh, and once we started showing progress, you know, we started showing that, you know, we're getting crazy traction. People are talking about us, you know, uh, there's customers coming in, there's some transactions happening. And now the kind of like the interest is trying to build up. And, and many ask like, you know, how do I start it without any money? Beg, borrow. Do not spend time going after an investor when you don't have a product. You know, it's going to take a bunch of your time and even us as well, you know, it took a lot of our time. Like, and then I realized how you used to do it with Unicoin. It's tough, man. Like if you were able to close around now, it's because of the years of those efforts that you put in to get fruits in the end. And it's tough. Like as a yeah, founder, and, the best thing you can do is just build. And, and exactly. Focus on building hundred percent. I think that's the best way to get. And, and I, I just, I just finished recording with Satvik. So that'll come out before this one. And he finishes telling the story about how Barry Silber reached out to him back in yeah. 2014. And he's like, no, that's thank amazing, you. Yeah. And he's like, he said, no, thank you. <laughs> he said, thank you, but no, yeah. thank you. He was like confused. Why would somebody <laughs> give him money for, you know, like a website that we're building, you know, what did they want in return? <laughs> It was even foreign. Uh, so I, I think that is the best position yeah. to come from, right? Where somebody's like, yeah. take my money, um, as opposed to, you know. Um, and, and the other thing I was going to mention too, Roshan, is I think that also investors, um, I think people make the mistake of like, oh, I'll reach out to an investor. And then that's it. But the key is, is that investors I've, don't I've invest <laughs> in pictures. They invest in movies right? Yeah, so they, yeah, they, yeah. they're so smart, right? And they, they see, okay, they, you pitch them once. Great. Okay. Okay. Next month or, you know, three months down the road, where are you three months down the road? Are you, are you working on some different project? Are you, are you declining in terms of user? Are you, are you, what are you focused on? And they, they track that. And then that kind of yeah. acts as a, a bit of a litmus test for them, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Hey, Roshan, listen, I, I was going to say, we're going to, we're going to approach like, uh, oh, it's kind of <laughs> goes by really fast, but we're going to, we have like 15 minutes left. So I wanted to ask you, so we covered kind of your story around the, you know, Bitcoin singularity, if you will. We covered your projects that you've been a part of um, while you've been in Bitcoin. Um, many of them super interesting, uh, most of them super scammy. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, no, no. I love, I love, I love your, your, your career path. And then, and then now we're at a point where I guess you said you guys started, you know, obviously facing some of these challenges with the RBI and all that. I mean, I don't know if you want to go into too much detail. We could zip past some of that. Um, you know, I, again, I'm going to be covering that with Satvik as well, but any, any highlights or maybe lessons learned you want to share during that moment or any, any stories at all, or you want to just pass on this one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, that's a really tricky slope, right? Uh, but again, most of it is all public and everybody knows what's, what happened. But what one thing that um, I would say uh, is that, they don't really know anything. Like it's a very strong bold statement to make. Who's they? But Sorry. The, the regulator, the decision makers in this industry, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and they're not willing to learn. It's like you have this blockage in front of you and they're not willing to go past that. And uh, it's, it's a lot of like handpicking. The first thing that they say is Silk Road. Silk Road happened six years ago. You know, the market has moved way ahead after that. You know, uh, so you cannot take, uh, handpick certain things and if you know like you know we had this this uh, a lot of uh, reviews of all exchanges that happened in December 2017 every exchange you know uh, got an officer over there uh, so uh, the first like one of the like one hilarious moment for me was the first question there was like call the Bitcoin CEO okay what and, the regulators told you to call the Bitcoin CEO right away yeah, okay yeah. what did you do did you call <laughs> I was I was dumbstruck for like 30 seconds. I was like, sorry, what do you mean? He's like, you're not a Bitcoin company, right? So who's the CEO of Bitcoin? So we all, we looked at each other and we're like, okay, please sit down. We spent two hours. We spent two hours explaining the entire technology, explaining how it works. And then they were amazed. And they're like, what? And, and they were like, you know, we were told that you guys are doing something bad. And we're like, this is a this is a very bad notion to have. You know, we are just like any other business, whether during the early stages of the telecom industry, during the early stages of the internet. We are, think of this like this new internet, this new technology that's coming in, and we are in the early stages. So 
we have to like educate people and you know i know it's it's understandable that you know you think it's a lot of negativity involved with it and then we spoke we spoke a lot we spoke how the ledger works how blockchains work and mm. how everything is like decentralized and all that and they learned like i mean it, it went on for hours after that you know it was it was very very tricky experience but that was like a crazy learning curve for them as well and that's when we realized that you know this is going to take time we cannot force regulations we cannot ask for things this is because they need to study from the ground up and many of them go to for they basically co- copy a lot of foreign policies if this country is doing certain things let's copy that i'm like then copy the good things you know like many countries are legalizing it many countries are are having licenses for it and they said yeah they're open to it so we gave proposals for it and all that so with the rbi thing as well right so we i mean trupid as well was one of the petitioners in the in the case with a lot of other exchanges as well and uh, we used to i mean our case never came up for hearing for like a year you know it was just very brief and we used to go to delhi you know wait for the case to come up and all that and we kind of like gave out a proposal and the rbi first gave out a statement as to why they feel that this is a threat and to the national rupee and deep and this and dismissing a lot of potential of bitcoin and we kind of like wrote back you know dismissed every single point and it wasn't because we were biased like i kind of like wrote a paper as well on it like there's there's, there's no factual statement that they are making like everything can be dismissed they speak about volatility so one of the things i talk about volatility is that you should be a fool if you think bitcoin is too volatile and it's it's, it's risky because it's volatile so i give this example if there are three of us in a room if all of us are trading we have this new currency that we launched i say it's 100 dollars you say it's 200 this person says it's 50 if i buy it at 200 the price jumps to 200 doubles so the less the amount of people the more volatile it's going to become and bitcoin's volatility has reduced over the years bitcoin used to go up 20 25 i mean you you've been in longer bitcoin used to jump 20% in a day today it doesn't happen today max it can go is like 7 8% you know so the volatility is reducing and until we reach a critical mass so even to the some of the regulators that i spoke to i explained this concept volatility can never be used as a tool to attack bitcoin because this is an unregulated space there are very few people in it let the institutions come in let more and more people start coming and start trading it then the spread will reduce the buy and sell spread will reduce and that will only happen once we get to a critical mass which due to bitcoin's short supply of 21 million it's going to be hundreds of thousands of dollars bitcoin needs to get to that level and to get to that stage and many of them are shocked what bitcoin can go to 100000 dollars like yeah like there's nothing surprising about it it's economics you understand economics and technology and you can predict bitcoin like this reason why people make 500k bitcoin predictions a million dollar bitcoin predictions they're not idiots you know these are like really huge economists that actually made these predictions and you study it like it might not happen like 30 years down the line but it will happen and that's a lot of like a learning curve and a lot of things i had to so be said to those to the regulators and it kind of like i mean again, like you know nobody cares like you know the like india has like a lot of other things to like think about and nobody really cares about it so it's a good thing what happened this year so uh kind of all the efforts like you know uno coin like huge thing for harish especially like he was always around you know every single hearing harish was like and once i even called him up and do like take me to one of these hearings like you know we were even scheduled to go and all that so uh harish has been a huge part of it uh and even like crypto kanun as well what they've been doing in india like they've been like taking uh like but it was like live proceedings in the court that was happening it was such amazing like march uh, that month i, I interviewed uh yeah, kashif kashif i've seen that you yeah. saw it yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Like, yeah he was talking about it you know <laughs> and when he was standing there yeah. and harish was there four in the morning every day relentless i'm going to i'm working my way up to harish <laughs> I'm working my way up to Harish. That, that, I'm, gonna, I'm saving really him for, the, <laughs> you know, that'll be like the final Netflix, you know, film, right? Or the interview, <laughs> the dark room. What, what do you think like, about a, <laughs> like a film on Bitcoin? Like, like I'm pretty sure everybody's talking. I'm down. About it, I'm know? down. I just yeah. need someone like artistic, good, good to. Don't you think people together. are working on you it? Know, like, I, I heard there's this movie called Crypto that could be coming out on Netflix. Okay. I, don't know. Like, no, I haven't. I, mean, like, I haven't heard about it. Maybe it, should, it's, it, it, should, uh, it shouldn't good. be a documentary. It should be a movie, right? Like it should be like you know where people are enacting. You know, there's this whoever the Satoshi guy is, and you know all these influences early stage, all play a part on it. So I, I've been following this comic called uh, Bitcoin Stories itself. I think it's called Bitcoin Stories itself. Uh, it, it's a it's a, it's a comic. Uh, it's like Satoshi, like Bitcoin is a coin with like you know hands and legs and all that. 
and the show, like the, the, the initial stages of how it came and, and even Ethereum and all this stuff. So I really think, you know, like there should be kind of a movie like this. I'm, I met this one guy in Boston for one of the conferences and he was like, I want to make a Bitcoin movie. You know, I've got, I'm a producer. I want to make this amazing Bitcoin movie. This was like three years ago. And I'm like, okay, cool. Like, you know, get all these people, like get, get the top influencers and all this stuff. I'm like, yeah, I want to do it. I want to do it. But I'm pretty sure, you know, it will come down the line. And that'll be so amazing if it does. Hey, hey, hey Roshan, before we yeah. uh, conclude like this, this, this yeah. interview or whatever, um, do you want to maybe quickly share uh, like any contrarian beliefs? Remember I told you about this one? So it's like uh, amongst Bitcoiners, let's start with that one. Do you have any that you want to maybe share? Yeah, like the volatility thing was one thing, you know, uh, where like where people keep saying, uh, you know, it's uh, too volatile. And mm. I believe like critical mass is extremely important. Um, one more thing, like, uh, which I kind of like on the sidelines about it, the digital gold payment aspect of it, you know, uh, so I understand why Bitcoin. That's the best part, no? I understand why Bitcoin Cash exists, you know, even though I'm not a fan of it. Uh, but I do believe what people see in Bitcoin, you know, as a payment rail. But then once you're in the industry for so long, you understand, no, like during Unicoin, like, like, so we built the first merchant gateway in India, the crypto merchant gateway. And we used to do a lot of transactions. Mm-hmm. I spent a lot of my Bitcoin making sure it works. You know, I spent, I used to spend like 0.1 Bitcoin for like, you know, like some t-shirt or something like that. I spent doing those days, some shoe or something like that. So, and then I look back, you know, some people say they regret it a lot, but I'm like, okay, it was cool. But deep down, it kind of like hurts. You know, like spending all those Bitcoin and, you know, just travels and, and you know, my story. The f- Dude, there was a time where I used to give people one wow. Bitcoin at my wow. meetups. Wow. No, because it was like $10 or like $15. You regret it? Like, pff, you okay, regret whatever. Let me give this person $10. I don't know. I don't regret it. I, I don't regret it because I kind of feel like if I hadn't done that, then Bitcoin wouldn't yeah. be where it is today. Like getting people to feel the importance of like how easy it is to move it. And, and like, it's how it's like the email yeah. of money and this and that uh, I think is part of the narrative. So I, no, I don't regret it. I don't regret anything. I mean, there's so many, I mean, you do can, you agree with you the, regret, digital gold, so many uh, the digital gold kind of a concept of it? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Digital gold, hundred percent. That's my number one. Yeah. That's my number one feature of what I think it, the fact that it helps us, um, it gives us, a tool that if you decide that inflation is not something you're interested in, you can put your whatever, your value, your your hard-earned time, your energy into a asset that depreciates. I mean, that, that goes, that, that where the number of units are limited, et cetera, then, et cetera. To me, it's right, like every, everything that has value, biggest thing, one of the Everything that has value is because of a certain use case. Like Gold has a lot of intrinsic value with respect to, you know, being used, jewelry and, you know, trophies and all this stuff. Bitcoin, if you're not, if you're not using it, what is it used for? Right. For storing wealth, for storing, for store. I, I think it's actually a way to reverse the hands of time. <laughs> That's a very interesting thing, yeah. Because, 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 because when I was stuck in the fiat world, there was always more month than money. Mm-hmm. It always felt like there was a few more days and you just, the paycheck wouldn't come soon enough. Yeah. And after your taxes and inflation and all the things that you're fighting yeah. on an uphill battle, yeah. as soon as you learn about Bitcoin, the yeah. singularity, to me, it just all switched and snapped. Yeah. And it was like, whoa, like I can now, like I want to save. I don't, I'm not going to be in this economy where everyone's like, you must spend as much as you can because that's the good thing. It's like, yeah, save, yeah. there's actually Thing that I can save and, and yeah. not, you know, just yeah. be a consumer all the time and I can opt out and it's not controlled by any one party. And, oh, I can and if you look at it, right, yeah, the ecosystem is going towards a direction. Like there's this digital gold concept. And if you want to spend, if you also want to make, spend this lightning network that is kind of like built on top of it, like for microtransactions and all that. So it's, it's, it's actually redefining what money is, what is known to people, store of value, you can spend it. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a medium of exchange. It kind of like completes into a whole way. And that's why I believe like the smartest people in the world are working on Bitcoin. If you look at the smartest developers in the world, even like they are working on Bitcoin. Like that is where the, the, the wealth is, talent is. Yeah, man, I am so fascinated. Yeah. And you know, I've known you for five, six years now, or whatever, maybe longer. I and and I my level of enthusiasm yeah. around Bitcoin has not 
you know, deteriorated. It's only yeah. amplified. And I'm not going to lie, man, a couple of years ago during all that RBI stuff, I was, ugh, I felt like, you know, the weight of the world. Uh, I mean, even though nobody even knew or cared or whatever, but, you know, for us having to lay out, lay off people and, oh my goodness, like, uh, it was just, it was just brutal, um, you know, with all the stories that with Satvik and Harish, and it was really sad. Um, but you know, now we're happy times. And so this is, this is why I'm doing this show, man. Yeah. Just get the word out. Hey, Roshan, um, just in closing, anything you want to, um, leave people with in terms of like Twitter handle websites, all that stuff in terms of where they can learn more about you and follow you. And by the way, we should definitely do like a, a follow-up if you're down. Cause I haven't even gone yeah. through, Go yeah. you know, anyways, I have, I have a bunch of stuff that we can talk about. I, yeah. I, I like to keep my first one a bit, yeah. you know, formulaic because, and people know what to expect, yeah. but uh, but yeah, we can go in tangents after that. Yeah, sure. So uh, I mean, the Twitter handle is SFR DV. I have to change that, you know. So this was basically the Saffron Coin developer is when I kind of like it was like SFR DV, but uh, yeah. Uh, but for now, for now, that's it. And uh, yeah, and and if you guys want to stack Bitcoin, get 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 free Bitcoin. Like, please go on to gosats.io. Uh, we are rolling out public access uh, shortly, and if you want private access, just enter your email address. And boom, and that's it. You, you, you'll be included in a waiting list. Uh, so yeah, um, that's it, I guess. Sounds good, man. You, man. Yeah. Sounds good. We'll do this again soon, hopefully. Sure, sure. And uh, I am going to kill the video.